Hi friends, my name is Ansha and I'm an educator of an academy and you can follow me on our website www.anacademy.com or you can download the Anacademy learning app from the Play Store or the App Store and in this lesson we'll study symmetric encryption, different types of symmetric ciphers and if you like this lesson please rate, recommend and review and please share it with your friends and uh, don't forget to subscribe to your YouTube channel. Hi, so in the previous lesson, we had just an introduction to the two types of cryptographic techniques. One was symmetric and the other was asymmetric. So symmetric means using a single key for both encryption and decryption. But in asymmetric, we uh, used a pair of keys. So there will be two keys. Okay. So here we are going to learn some symmetric encryption techniques. Okay. So basically, so basically, all the encryption techniques use any of these two methods. So we have two methods, two types, substitution techniques and transposition techniques. So substitution means we are substituting a letter or simple or number or anything for each letter in the plain text. And thus we form the cipher. So for every letter or element in the plain text, we put some other element. So okay, uh, so that we can form the cipher. Okay, so this is an example. Okay, so uh, our plain text is name and uh, we are forming the cipher. So uh, we are replacing N with I, we are replacing A with U, M with P and E with X. So that is a kind of substitution. Okay. So the word name became I U P X. Now it is impossible to recognize it is the word name, isn't it? I mean, just uh, by just seeing it, you can probably figure that out. But if you get the key and the encryption algorithm, you might get it right. A anyway, that is substitution. So the letters of the plain text are replaced by other letters or by numbers or by simples. Okay, so that is substitution technique. And the next one is transposition technique. In this method, I'm not taking any other elements, uh, not any elements outside the plain text, plain uh, text simple, so plain text elements. Uh, I'm just rearranging the elements in the plain text uh, and form the cipher. So the same example name, we have name. This is our plain text. And I'm rearranging it like this. So we uh, had four letters N A M E. I'm just taking these four letters and performing a permutation here. Okay. So I'm rearranging the letters. So N is there, A is there, M is there and E is also there. So the whole, wo whole word is changed. It's very interesting. You see the even the meaning changed, isn't it? So um, that is transposition so performing some sort of permutation on the plain text letters and it is a rearrangement of letters of the plain text but here but in uh, this case in substitution techniques uh, uh, it, it need not be necessarily a part of or it, it need not be necessarily uh, an element of plain text it may be or it may not be a, an element of plain text okay so uh, that is the difference between substitution and transposition techniques. Here we are uh, rearranging the letters of plain text. Here we are replacing each letter by some other letter. Okay, so that is substitution techniques and transposition techniques. Now we'll learn some uh, substitution techniques and transposition techniques. Okay, so first one is substitution techniques. And in substitution techniques, we have monoalphabetic ciphers and polyalphabetic ciphers. So a monoalphabetic cipher means it is a fixed substitution. Uh, for a letter or for a number, we always substitute the same element. For example, uh, if we substitute i for n, that is uh, our plain text letter is n. And we are uh, replacing it with i. Okay, so this N is the plain text letter and I is the cipher text letter. Okay, so, so in our message, wherever or whenever N comes, we put an I there. Okay, so that is monoalphabetic cipher. That is, it is fixed substitution. So it is fixed substitution and a single cipher alphabet for each plain alphabet is used throughout the process. That is, let's consider this example, my name. Okay, so we have two M's here. So for M, I am putting N and for Y, I am transforming it into Z and for N, O, for A, B, for M, N and for E, F. So we had two M's in the plain text and in cipher text again it is same. 
isn't it for m it's always n for m it's always n used here so that is fixed substitution so wherever m comes it will always be replaced with n so that is monoalphabetic cipher okay now the next one is polyalphabetic cipher just the name is enough to understand the difference mono means what one and what is poly it means multiple isn't it so here we don't have any fixed substitutions uh, so i can use different substitution for the same letter so uh, for even if the same letter appears more than one time it need not necessarily be the same encryption so consider this example my name okay so again we have two m's here so for m i am using n for y i am using z for n i am using o for a i am using b for m i am using l and for e i am using f so we had two m's here for first term we used n and for the second term we used l so it is not same there isn't it so that is the difference so here we had two occurrence of m and for the first time we uh, used this uh, n as the cipher alphabet and for the second time it was l so that is polyalphabetic cipher and monoalphabetic ciphers okay now let's start learning some um, techniques some symmetric ciphers okay so first one is caesar cipher so it it is also called shift cipher so what is the process here each letter in the plain text is replaced by a letter corresponding to a number of shifts in the alphabet okay so this is a monoalphabetic cipher that means uh, throughout the process the encryption alphabet will be fixed whereas in poly alphabet it, it can be different at different positions right okay so this is an example for monoalphabetic cipher so each letter in plain text is replaced by a letter corresponding to a number of shifts so that is why it is called a shift cipher okay so a simple uh, caesar cipher uses key plus 3 okay so uh, in that case a will be replaced with d b will be replaced with e and so on that means a will be replaced with d means a after a we have b c d three times we are shifting so a means after a we have b b c d isn't it so three times shifting right to the right side because we had plus 3 okay so after a we have a b c and d so this will be the corresponding cipher alphabet okay and for b it will be c d e okay and for c it will be d e f three times shifting to the right side okay so that is the key here so if it was key uh, if the key was plus 1 then a will be uh becoming b and d will be becoming c and so on okay clear so that is caesar cipher if the key was minus 2 then um c will be becoming b a okay c will be becoming a and d will be becoming b okay so if it is minus then we need to go to the left side and if it is plus we need to go to the right side okay so that is caesar cipher and this is an example so this is my plain text i love an academy okay so i will be replaced with l because the key is plus 3 here so after i we have j k l and after l we have m n o and after o we have p q r and after v we have w x y and after e we have f g h and after u we have v w x okay and so on so that is a uh, caesar cipher and uh, this is a mono alphabetic cipher as we just learned so let's just see it here so we have a uh, two a's here so uh, for the first time a was d and for the second time also it was d okay and then we have two e's here so for the first e it was replaced with h and for the second e also it was replaced with h okay so that is that is mono alphabetic cipher okay so a single cipher alphabet is used throughout the process okay so that is an example for caesar cipher and the key can be anything okay any number of shifts to the right uh, right side or the left side okay so it we can use left shift or right shift 
now it can represent it can be represented mathematically as e of m is equal to m plus k mode 26 so what is m m is the message e means encrypting okay and k means what k is the key now to decrypt the same message we can use this formula okay so decrypting this message means m minus k that is what is what is m it is the plain text alphabet and what is k it is the key okay so m minus k mode 26 26 represents the number of alphabets okay so that is a caesar cipher and it is vulnerable to brute force attack and its security is uh, too low and as far as the security is concerned uh, it is one of the weakest cipher okay and uh, why do we say it is vulnerable to brute force attack? So brute force attack means uh, trying every possible key on the cipher text, isn't it? Until we get an intelligible translation. So uh, in this case, in this case, the K key can have uh, only a limited number of values, isn't it? So it is uh, vulnerable to brute force attack and attackers can easily decrypt the message. So that's why we say it is one of the weakest cipher okay so in the coming lessons we'll study more uh, more uh, ciphers okay thank you